David. Michael. Good to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. So we are uh, in your booth here at AHR 2024. You guys have a massive booth, a yeah. lot of technology on display. This particular unit is really, really impressive to me. So this is a really cool new unit that really tackles a special market. Talk a little bit about what we're looking at here. Yeah, so what this is, uh, what we're calling is our MIDEA PWHP, uh, which stands for Package Window Heat Pump. And really, it was kind of born out of New York City's Clean Heat for All Challenge. Right. So New York City Housing Authority, New York Power Authority, the New York State uh, Energy Research and Development Authority yep. came together and said, hey, New York City housing, you know, to especially with local law 97 coming up, really they want to transition towards electrification. How do we do that? So right. today they've got steam heat uh, radiators and they're like, we want air source heat pump mounted in the window. Right. And so they put that challenge out to manufacturers at the end of 2021 uh, as a specification uh, and then submitted bids in March of 2022. Uh, and then we heard back and we won 20,000 of the 30,000 units that they were basically bidding out right. uh, in like August of 2022. And then it's just been running like crazy. Yeah. And so we actually installed 36 of these at one of their uh, housing complexes as a demonstration phase as part of that. Um, and it's been really cool just to see them run, get usage, get real world experience, especially totally new category for a window mounted, basically room air conditioner. So as a, a guy who's very entrenched in the field, I'm working with contractors and engineers and utility partners all the time. Mm -hmm. One of the things that gets overlooked is the existing building. It doesn't yeah. matter whether it's a commercial building, a residential home. So if we're building a new building, it's really easy to say, we're gonna put a large heat pump on the roof. Yeah. We're gonna design the building around it. The thing that gets overlooked by nobody's fault, but it's very frustrating for me is that if we go into any any kind of an apartment building that's existing in an older part of town, we can't just take out that old boiler and put in a $600,000 heat pump right. because the infrastructure is not there to support yeah. it. What I like about this is this is an easy drop in 115 volt appliance right. that we can slip into a window that does heating and cooling and there are no infrastructure upgrades. Right. You literally just plug it into the wall and you're done. Exactly. Yeah. And that, and that was a lot of what their specification said. They said, hey, we want a window mounted high efficiency, cold climate capable, you know, wind heat pump. Yeah. And so, and it had to be 115, like you said, uh, 15 amp circuit. Yeah. So that they didn't have to do any huge electrical upgrades. Um, and so that's exactly what we, we provided. So it's 9,000 BTUs of heating at 17 Fahrenheit, uh, 9,000 BTUs of cooling. Uh, we can do 100% heating at five Fahrenheit. So 9,000 BTUs all the way down to five. Right. And we can actually cool or heat all the way down to negative 15 Fahrenheit. Yeah. Uh, sorry, negative 13. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, it's it for a room air window mounted unit. Yeah. It's like yeah. It's really cutting you know cutting the edge of technology. So one of the things that we we get really hyper focused on is electrification, and I am a heat pump guy, and I am hyper fo focused on electrification. Yeah. But the one thing that we always forget, I try not to, and I'm sure you don't, David, is we forget that electrification is a good thing, mm -hmm. but it needs to come in small steps, mm -hmm. right? And this, in my opinion, is a good example of that. It's very easy to say that we need to put the best, the most efficient cold climate heat pump into the space for carbon needs, but the reality is they need to be able to afford it, oh, right? Yeah. And, and this appears to be a very, from what I'm seeing and what I've read about this technology, this is a really easy right. drop-in technology yeah. that can basically go in any multi-unit residential building. Right. It has great performance numbers. You know, some people might argue that a larger unit that can work at a lower outdoor temperature is better, but this is affordable mm -hmm. and the installation time is very, very quick. Exactly. And just like you said, right, you've got these older buildings where you can't go mount a massive system. Yeah, you know, if I need a 30 amp breaker for every unit you're putting in, I've just eliminated yeah. how much? 50% right. of New York, BC, Toronto, like it's a big problem. Yeah, and, and, and too, like, I mean, you've got these old buildings, so there's, there's no, you know, effective way to cut holes in the wall to put a PTAC yeah. or something. Um, so being able to just install it in the window, right. two person job, no, refrigerant line hookups, no new electricals to be ran, no plumbing required. Right. You just install it, seal it up, plug it in and turn it on. Yeah, what I like is we're saying the same thing, right? You're not saying this is for everybody. Right. In the same token, everybody has to pick what makes the most sense for them, right? Yeah. Some people will say they want hybrid, they want a heat pump with gas. Some people might want a large rooftop. Right. I love ground source heat pumps. Yeah. This is not a replacement for that. No, this is, it, it, what I've really come to learn, especially in the multifamily space, is like this fit a very specific area where there was a gap and there was no product. And what I like to like say that is like, this is basically another tool in the toolbox for yeah. technicians and contractors to basically use, say, hey, all right, I've got this application. Yeah. But these other ones just don't make sense. 
let's put this in there. Yeah, so what I like about the installation is there's a few things, and we'll go around the outside in a second. You've got a great setup where we can see the window. Yeah. Is installation-wise, it's really easy because basically this back component folds up. We can slide it through the window and then it folds down. Right. The installation can be easily done by one or two guys. Roughly, what does this weigh? Uh, so it's about 120 pounds. So 120 pounds, like even the two guys is a bit of a stretch, but two guys comfortably yes. could install this. You slip it through the window, you plug it in, and you're basically done. Exactly, yeah. So it, it, it comes with a uh, installation bracket, right? Yeah. So it has a, a mounting bracket included with it that has gas springs, you know, to help with that installation. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's definitely intended to be much more of a easily installed unit than you know, a lot of units that require construction yeah. or hookups. But yes, the you know the, the weight aspect is is something that well. Uh, so we, you and I are definitely not advocating against skilled trades, but the oh, reality no. is that this is a unit that can be installed. Like even our camera operator Francesco, no offense, Francesco, like him and his buddy can slip this through the window, install yeah. it, plug it in, very yeah. successfully. Right, and then too, right? This is I mean, this is also intended to be you know something that's going to be maintained. It's right? ease of access, serviceable. Yeah, you know as well, right? So you know there's going to be skilled trades required for you know, absolutely. Some of that. Yeah. So it, it's definitely you know whereas most window ACs, it's like. It breaks. They throw right, it let's away. Let's go get another one. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Now this window trim detail, is this yours, this window trim detail here? Yes, yes. That's nice because one of the things I've seen is there is other technology on the market and one of the things that wasn't really great for me, I, I'm not a building science expert, but I'm dangerous. Thank you, Dr. Allison Bales and Robert Bean. They've taught me enough. We can't just slip this through the window and not have a good barrier between the outside and the inside. Yeah, yeah. So you guys have some sort of a closed cell insulation here that's separating the outdoor indoor when the window comes down. Exactly. Yeah. So in that, in, in, in NYCHA and NYPA were like really thinking on that. They said, hey, we want this to be a good unit, but the installation has to be good. Yeah. Right? We want to make sure it seals well. Thermal insulation uh, is important. And even internally, right? The yep. unit is, is also has insulation to help. Right? You're not going to get it around the unit. You don't want to get it through the unit either. Yeah. Well, let's look at the outside really quickly if we can. We'll just okay. wander around and have a quick peek here. So this is the outdoor portion of the unit. One of the things I particularly like about this is it has the installer in mind is I actually like these handles. Yeah. Right, the handles actually make it easier that when you're leaning out and trying to drop this in place, you actually have something to hold on exactly. to. Exactly. And so the other David that I was speaking with earlier had pointed out that you guys are focused on the contractor and the installation. It's little details like this that yeah. the homeowner may not recognize, but the reality is you've given them an easy way to put it in place. Because 120 pounds, like yeah. I work out, you look like you work out, we could probably handle it. Yeah. Let's make it adaptable for everybody. Well, and once you get it on there, right? Once you get it on the bracket, that 120 pounds is a lot easier to manage. Yeah. But you want to make sure it's stable and, and you have right ways to hang on to it as it gets in, let it rotate. And then two, when you need to pull it out, if you need to service it, clean it, yeah. whatever, uh, you've got that easy access. So there's, there's handles on the side here. I'm assuming these handles would allow us to fold it up on top of itself. Exactly. And uh, this would be the pivot point. And what are these for here? Those are to see? lock it in place. So once Perfect. it rotates, it, holds, it keeps it in place. That's ingenious. So basically what would happen is if, if we pull this, we won't try to demo it, but if I pull this, it would just basically fold up on top. I've now got handles or handles that I can move it with. And once I slip it into place, this just locks back and then the unit can't move. Exactly. That's pretty sweet. Well, this is a really cool unit. You said it was basically about 9,000 BTUs, so that's yes. going to cover a lot of the market. Yeah, it's, a, it's kind of right, especially for room air, right? It's covering a living room or maybe a bedroom. Yep. It's definitely a good capacity for those. Well, and as you look sizes. at a lot of these apartment units, a lot of them have that central design, you know, where you've got the kitchen that's connected to the living room. Like yeah. something like this with 9,000 BTUs of heating and cooling, especially when you're in an old building that just has a boiler, not disparaging a boiler. This is a great leap forward. Yeah. And I don't know how long this would take to install, but my guess would be 30 minutes. Minutes, 45 yeah. minutes? Yeah, so when they installed, uh, the, we did 36 units. I'm trying to think the first day we did just six units. First time doing it. You yeah, know, and working with the maintenance it's... guys, showed them how. They just went right at it. I think they got it all done, at least those first six within like three hours, three and a half hours. I would believe it. They just they went quick and it, and it was great, right? And they didn't have any, any issues or complaints. And so this has full approvals for the North American market? Yeah, yeah. So it is, you know, certified from a DOE standpoint, you know, from a UL uh, or CSA uh, safety standpoint. Um, yeah, so we have all the certifications uh, and ready to go in the North American market. Well, I think this is a really exciting product. You know, as I say, where I come from in Canada, there's, yeah. there's been some incentives where they've actually been going in and putting in AC units because of the fear of people dying, yeah. right? Oh, we yeah. had a heat wave this summer where people were dying, which none of us wants to hear. No, no, no. And the push was to put in AC units that look like this. 
and I hope that people will watch this video, see this yeah. technology, and realize what you're doing is great, but you could have done a drop-in heat pump, and right. we could have actually worked towards that carbon reduction and deliver on the car. Yeah, and I mean, you know, to go to a heat pump isn't that much more uh, of an impact on the, on the product, but the benefit is yeah. huge, right? And so, and like you were saying, right, with the cooling, that's that's what's really been eye-opening, especially, you know, with some of the, the buildings in New York, is everybody's got heat from the boilers and yeah. the radiators, but not everybody has cooling. This gives everybody that's gonna have one of these in the apartment, they get heating, but they also get cooling. Yeah. And, and it's just awesome, it, and right, we know Canada is going to be part of the market, so we're working to get one up there and get that stuff going. So I'm pretty, pretty sure I can help ones. on that front, right? Yeah. Like, I think it's a really cool product. I can't wait to see what Generation 2 looks like. Again, yeah. not a knock at this, oh, no. but you guys have shown me some really cool stuff, yeah. Generation 1, Generation 2. I appreciate your time, David. Yeah, it's great meeting you and great talking about this. Thanks, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.